welcome to another episode of the Stella Sound Podcast, the only podcast relatively unknown to Earthlings, but rocking in all the interdimensional space traveling radars to empower creative musicians everywhere. I'm your host, Leandri Paulson, and today I'm excited to be joined by Matt Makowski. But first, to become part of our interstellar presence, find us at StellarSoundPodcast.com on all social platforms at Stellar Sound Podcast, or join our astronauts in the Stellar Sound Discord community. Links are in the description. Matt is a Michigan-raised metal vocalist currently residing in South Korea. From sound editing to fronting the deathcore band Get to the Point, Matt has tipped out the line between performer and behind-the-scenes specialist. As a true form of a modern artist, you can also find Matt behind the lens with his stoic photography on all his socials or even by finding one of his short films online. Matt, welcome to the Stellosphere and how are you today? I'm doing pretty good. It's morning for me. I'm just still waking up. I'm doing good. <laughs> Are you like getting your morning coffee? You're almost yeah, awake. Yeah, morning by the, coffee. By the end of this podcast, you're going to be ready to just start your day. It's going to be like that morning exercise routine. <laughs> you're going to have breakfast, a podcast for breakfast, as they would say. Podcast for breakfast. I mean, champion, breakfast of champions, right? What? <laughs> it's pretty. It's, That's right. It's pretty early at my side too. I think by the time that we're done, I'm gonna have a gonna have a a, a hearty breakfast, if you will, um, just to get the day. This is gonna be a very early day. But I mean, we're here. We're ready. We're gonna enjoy this. Um, and I want to just jump right into your existence as a Michigan Knight. Um, so Michigan is your home state, like I mentioned, um, and. From my very limited knowledge, it's a very diverse place to grow up. Um, I think I read somewhere that you guys have an island. Uh, I'm going to really like brutally murder this name, but Mechanic Mechanic Island, uh, which was like ah oh, yeah, which was like voted uh, like one of the friendliest places in the world. But then you guys also have like Detroit, which is like the most dangerous places in the world, <laughs> <laughs> and. Like, it's such a, a weird spectrum to be on. Like, there's no gray area. It's either black or white uh, when it comes to Michigan. And I think it's very similar when you think about the music, because you have that strong Motown presence, but you also have a proto-punk presence, which is completely different. So I want to know, in all this diversity, this real hot pot of everything, what drew you to metal and specifically to deathcore? Yeah, it's really funny. I was um, talking about this last night with uh, somebody who grew up with the music in both the States and Korea because he's an adoptee. Yeah. And I've had never been to Mackinac Island, actually. Ah, I've been close. <laughs> I've yeah. never been there. It's it's. Uh, I've heard, like, there's a lot of like, incest and stuff going on up there. Like, <laughs> that uh, makes... there's some cults, you know. Like, uh, they're that also very be... friendly. Yeah, that's it's a very be... specific location for that. <laughs> that but might be why. also they friendly. banned cars. Yeah. yeah, might be why. Hey, this is my. <laughs> they banned cars too, so you're like forced to, you know, find other modes of transportation. It's part of their, uh, I guess, habitat and culture to to protect the environment. And as far as metal is concerned, um, I grew up in into that scene very young age in Michigan and the the music scene there is also very diverse and I'm still learning as, as I was telling this guy yesterday about bands that were from my hometown like, oh they're from my hometown what? <laughs> and I had to, and I always had to pretend like I knew that otherwise I sound like I'm just like yeah I do from there <laughs> totally uh, most recently <laughs> I think a big piece of news um I, I feel horrible not remembering his name we got like morning brain right now <laughs> oh, I feel bad. He he recently passed away uh, from uh, oh my gosh, Black Label Society. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the guitarist, yeah, he was from uh, nearing a nearby neighborhood. Mm. So I, you know, he was a big, um, big contributor to to exposing the neighborhoods and metal music. Um, my one of my good friends from high school and middle school was really big into music and he picked up guitar early. He's kind of a prodigy at the time. He's still doing music. He's got the world's longest tongue. He's pretty cool. <laughs> and I still keep in touch with a lot of these guys and, and seeing them spread out and do their own thing has been really inspiring also. 
Um, but I, I, I tend to move a lot and experience different diverse scenes of music. Uh, I've always just been really drawn to metal. Mm. So it's really hard to say when or why, but I think my first album that drew me in was a uh, Deftones. Oh. I would, it's like more alternative rock, but I was like, Ooh, I like these riffs. I like the punching. I like mm. the angst. And, uh, my, my aunt bought it for me. Adrenaline, that album for my birthday, like when yeah. I just, just went into middle school and, um, Kept going that route, try a little bit of rap and hip hop, but I just kept going back to more heavy stuff. I think Slipknot eventually I got into them. It found its way <laughs> into the playlist as well. That's very interesting. Definitely. It's um, it's a. Um, I don't think we realize it as musicians, or I don't even say musicians, but people in general. Like we didn't realize that we being formed or our likes or uh, our interests are being formed. It's just someday you're in it and you can't pinpoint the exact point. But it's interesting that your aunt bought it, uh, bought your first, let's say, favorite album. Because let's, like, I mean, I didn't, I shouldn't speak for all cultures, but from the culture that I come from, that your aunt won't buy you a metal album. It's, it doesn't matter how cool your aunt, cool, your cool, cool aunt is. It's just, it won't happen. So, did she know what she was doing or was it nope. just on accident? <laughs> She's like, this Total sounds accident. fun. <laughs> yep. She's like, the album cover looked cool. And it? she thought it was a cool seashell. But <laughs> as anyone knows, Deftones album, it's actually a, a douche. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I was like, yeah, seashell. <laughs> <laughs> totally. That's totally what it is. Thanks. <laughs> um, but uh, you, you, you are born and raised and you are learning about your own music scene as well but what can you tell us about michigan that only a local will know basically i always get asked that question because a lot of people when they come to visit the states it's either new york or california yeah. maybe las vegas for the casinos obviously and the unspoken debauchery uh <laughs> michigan has, michigan sits right on top of ohio ohio is known for a famous theme park michigan has their own theme park as well that snoopy theme so we got a snoopy themed water park that is yeah, specific. pretty cool <laughs> yeah and comes with a really specific name michigan adventure and if you say michigan adventure people know exactly what you're talking oh. about it's a day trip with the family come back sunburned it's pretty nice we also have a uh, a fudge factory that a lot of people know about, or cho they make chocolate fudge. Um, you can buy the syrup for your ice cream, or just buy their chocolates if you're going out to meet some as a gift. Yeah, yeah. You could tour their factory, and um, they're really they're well known. And also, we're known for cars. That's a huge one. Locals yeah. obviously know about that. Everyone else might know about that, like in the states for sure. When I say mm. Detroit, people are like, oh, Chevrolet. You mentioned that yeah. <laughs> you dabble in so many diversity in your life from moving from point, point, point to point. That's true. And when I first read about you online, um, I was interested that you went from Michigan to South Korea, basically, um, which is very culturally different. Um, mm -hmm. And I wonder why I make... Of all places in the world, why jump to South Korea from Michigan? Actually, I went from Michigan, Florida, Tennessee, Missouri. Uh, <laughs> I think there's another one in there. Then back to Michigan. Um, I finished my kind of college route a little late because I spent a lot of my 20s. I don't know if I'm supposed to say my age on here. <laughs> <laughs> I spent most of my 20s being kind of neglectful to my education to pursue music seriously yeah mom i'm gonna make it this year i promise <laughs> we've and all been there man <laughs> devoted a lot of my time almost every day i slept on couches and inside storage <laughs> units like cars just trying to make it work and i finally went back to college for film as you mentioned earlier you can see some short films online so i, I really enjoy film and then i went back to michigan to do a job to working on a feature when that finished you know working in the music industry is contract base so i couldn't find another contract right away and i was already half kind of humoring going to korea as a it was mentioned to me at a rock climbing gym from a half korean buddy of mine he's <laughs> yeah. like try it i'm like i don't know I'm, 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 
<laughs> What's in Korea? <laughs> is it north or south? Which one are we talking? Oh, yeah. And so I find, <laughs> finally, they're, they're just like, you're approved. You want to go? And I said, uh, yeah. And then you so rock up in North Korea. <laughs> Surprise! Just rock up. Mind the right one? <laughs> Why are you arresting me? Get your hands off me. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's a... Um, that sounds like a... 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 Smuggling industry waiting to happen. Hey, come to Korea. It just doesn't tell you which one. <laughs> yeah, figure so, it out. That's a surprise for either one. <laughs> Could I you imagine? Uh, the IMDb. IMDb page. I cannot say that five times faster. <laughs> um, and then I was surprised to see how much behind the scenes work you have done. Like sound technician, sound mixing, editing work, and usually musicians do dabble in a lot of sound tech work, but you have dabbled a lot. <laughs> mm. um, so, and you, and you're front, uh, uh, the front man for get to the point. So, I want to know how did you start in the industry, and how did sound technicianing and editing work transition into fronting a band? Well, I must first, by disambiguating, there are four Matt Mikowskis in IMDb, so hopefully I sent the right one. There, I, I did do right sound one. work for <laughs> sure, but that was actually my first job, was um, doing sound, like a easiest job, honestly, just holding the boom mic for the actors. And they're like, you're good at this. I'm like, yeah, just hold the mic. You're <laughs> not making sounds. Just shut up and hold it. And I'm, and, um, I guess, you know, I'm kind of fit. So, like, you, you got to actually hold the mic for a long time sometimes in different positions. And they liked me. And they're like, yeah, if we ever do any other work. They formulated, like, a production company. And they hit me up for stuff. And then get referred to stuff. And I went to school for it. And then uh, being a musically inclined already like i was already playing guitar and trying to learn other instruments um i i uh went right back into both just swung both ways the door opened just both ways to music and sound music and sound i originally went to school ho hoping to go into sound engineering big surprise because mm. yeah. i wanted to compose music for film a film composer uh they had a big the school i just kind of went to was like, yeah, we got it. We got that program. It's a pretty good program, but there's a big wait list of six months. Good luck. I'm like, ah. So I switched yeah, it man. to film. Yeah, I didn't. Not that I didn't want to. I just was like, ah, that's why I came here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, he just walked so you, up you, the school door and joined sound. I'm like, oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> oh shit, no. So then you, then you, so you, I want to say you ended up enrolling um, in filmmaking or film. Yes, and obviously that... they have the sound department, which is closely attached to it, and I still sometimes do that. Not not well anymore. I'm not. I was a newbie, so like, oh, we don't care. Just do this and that. We'll show you. I worked uh, work with hold some good boom. people, but yeah, hold the boom. That's how I, my first one. Yeah, but I did like field mixing and uh, post mixing. Mm. I'm not good at that, surprisingly, but it's fun. Even like sound design, I enjoy that one. I tried doing a mm. I'm probably gonna you said rant, I'm gonna ramble this uh yeah. i tried doing when during covid when we couldn't go filming because you're not allowed to have people of five or one five or something i tried yeah. to do a radio play like just a, just audio only i i i did a account on a website for sounds and music and i started downloading sounds that i thought would fit and i wrote the script and i recorded everything got some actors they recorded their parts and it became like like a good project but then they left the country. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but that's, um, that, that's interesting. Um, how you transition? Is there a is there a core memory, <laughs> for lack of a better word? Is there a memory where you a day in time where you decide, okay, I am gonna fully transition to mu music full time, even though it didn't the the how would you say this is you wanted to go do the film composition, but then you ended up doing film and then somehow you got back into the music. Is there a point in time where you can remember that you decide, okay, I'm going to give the music thing a second try. Um, 
I gave music more than two. I gave it like twenty tries. It's it's a, <laughs> it's a die hard. It does not die. Like I got like a yeah. tattoo of like the music symbol, like the the clef and the rose, yeah. saying my passion for music will never die. I can't turn my arm that way. But I went yeah. to school and I and I took an elective class for music theory just to keep my brain. Even though I was there for film, I still was taking music theory. Just I couldn't get yeah. away from it. I took singing lessons. I wanted to just keep. I just really liked it. I did um uh musical theater was my minor, so I had to go up there singing Chicago and things from plays <laughs> I didn't know existed, like the Adams Family. I didn't know that was a musical. They got musicals for oh, yeah. everything now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like but, really everything. Really. And a lot of my friends were musicians. Like they had jam rooms in their houses for during college. And then I joined a band while I was in college and they're like, can you still study and do music? I'm like, yeah, I think so. Totally. <clears throat> and we, I was in this band in Tennessee. That's when I moved from Michigan to Tennessee to do college. And even before I went to that specific university, I was in a band. So I, I kept joining bands. I just kept joining bands and... I always thought this is the one that I'm going to love it. I'm going to go all in. I'm going to put money into the advertisements the... and t-shirts, merchandise and recording. And yeah, but Everything. the one in university, that one in particular was, we got a little taste where this guy, uh, we had a, we had a dinner or lunch with him and he's like, I, I work for Sony. I can get you guys a, like a signed label. We're like, Oh, get signed with Sony. Okay. I don't, I, Sony entertainment. That's label. Like pretty big deal That's, and um there's big player right there yeah. suddenly our bassist got cold feet was it the bassist doesn't matter one of the guys got cold feet the drummer had a baby good for him but he kind of settled him out of the band he's like ah, i can't tour i'm not going to be able to do that and a lot of us were like oh no we got to find replacements so we can fulfill our dream of being signed to a label this is it this is mm -hmm. it and then it just didn't happen and i get that's probably my biggest setback of disappointment great. And then again, I was just like, I'm back in the band, another band. But when I came to Korea, that's, I think, when I decided, like, I'm going to spend a year in another country and just try to be not American. I'm going to try to, <laughs> it was really hard to do. It was harder than I thought it'd be. And I went here and I was like, you know, first thing I did was make a short film. Why? Because that was what I went to school for. I just got done doing a whole feature movie. And I did a short film and I met people that way first. And then a month later, I was like, I'm going to start a band. I don't know why I it's... thought it was a good idea, but it was exciting. I was a new place. And all I yeah. did was roam around the streets of Hongdae, which is a very music heavy area. And I, if I saw a person carrying a guitar, which could very well be a busker. So I had to kind of gauge like, you know. their, if they're wearing a shirt or they had piercings or, this is a busker. They're wearing yeah. makeup and like a dazzling shirt, or or this guy yeah. is the mohawk and he's 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 got like chains on his pants. This guy's going to a show to have fun, not just play in the street. And that's what I did. I yeah. talked to people like, "Hey, you you in a band? Would you play? Let's do something." Visually but, vetted them. <laughs> yeah, and once it came together, I was like, "This is it. I'm in I'm in a band." And the whole reason I stayed here as long as I have is for music. For the band, for the band. The, yeah, that's yeah. that's amazing. And then you still, <clears throat> as you said, you're still side hustling the photography and filmmaking. It's you. It's quite the the Renaissance man, if you will. <laughs> but okay, Mac, it is time. Yes, yes. For the really creepy section of this podcast, oh, um, where I go through people's socials. Not oh, just, that like, creepy. He's just like internet stalking. It's completely safe harmless everyone and, does it yeah <laughs> like i say I, I keep saying i might get arrested one day but today shall not be that day um i went through your socials and then awesome. i stole a few pictures um i just awesome. want to know i just want some background knowledge on these but the best part is I always struggle sharing this damn screen. So you just got to give me a second and then I shall share my screen with you. Uh, no, that's, that's, that's not it. This is the bit like, I'm so good at computers and then I can't share my screen. There we go. I got it. Nailed it. Okay. Let me All just right. zoom in on that one. This All seems right. This came like, up in my memories two days ago, actually. Really nailed it. Or maybe it's yesterday. Yeah, that's that's funny. 
like what what is, this seems like a very throwback picture before you Super even said throwback. it was like but what where are you in this picture i assume like yeah take a guess <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that's you. I don't know. I can't even tell. There's such a old photo. But what's happening? What is this? What band is this? Just tell me everything. Uh, <laughs> this is my first mm, progressive, I don't want to say progressive, uh, metal band in Florida. So when I moved there, this is one of the bands I joined called Friends Meet the Massacre. <laughs> oh, wow. That is a name. I still love the name. Yeah. Um, we that was our only performance. We built the stage by hand. I remember smashing my finger between some wood and a nail. Like not a big injury or anything, but just like ah, oh. I remember when I see the stage, I go ow. Yeah. And <laughs> we're we're the guy on the left, all the way to the left of the picture with the long hair and guitar. That's me in the baggy pants. Um, I was no very way. skinny. Yeah, I was a very I was a good looker too. I was a ladies' man. Uh, the guy next to me, he was a vocalist. I met him at a job called Wanadu City, now closed. Uh, there's some similar places like Xanadu or whatever, where they have uh, little job stations for kids and they earn fake money to buy stuff. So I met, I met a lot of people with, from there, yeah. actually, like all over the world. Um, hence my reason of going to Thailand recently. <laughs> anyway, the guy in the drums, Jorge, he was an amazing drummer. He watched a lot of Mike Portnoy, whom... I got to talk on the phone with uh, the guy oh. all the way in the right is Mike. And I think the reason the memory came up was because his birthday was like a month ago. And then the guy on the left, his birthday was two days ago. And it was like, do you want to share a photo? I'm and that was nine, that. This is nine years ago, nine years ago. Whoa. Yeah. We did a one show. I think we bought two kegs. We, we put all our money in, you know, some, some of us had more than others, but we put <laughs> money into the show. It was really fun. We only yeah. had like, seven or eight songs which is pretty good for being in a band for just a few months and i uh, mean that's that's amazing for a, a starter man seven songs come on yeah that's like very a... lamb of god ish like very, ah. very lamb of god metal core with some math metal influences i just i love i love the photo because you can just pinpoint it in time just by how it looks <laughs> the setup and everything it's it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. <laughs> um, I really like this photo. This one really uh, stood out to me. Uh, this was both on your. It was shared across your socials from the photography website to mm. Facebook, Instagram. What? Why are you on a random dump pile? It seems <laughs> it's very aesthetic. A very aesthetic uh, yeah. dump pile. Just so you know. But why are we there? <laughs> uh, basically, I was filming. Uh, movie in Detroit, yeah. and of course, uh, Detroit is known for having some abandoned buildings. Michael Bay blew up a lot of buildings for Transformers, and I happened to go into one of those um, old buildings that he didn't blow up, but had some debris from the movie, and I just thought it was a really cool um, look when the light was coming to this tiny oh, yeah. little window on the wall there, and I was like, with my one of my good friends, I was like, hey, take a photo of me up here, and he's like, why? This is ugly. I just do it. I want it. <laughs> That's all. Oh, no. I, just, I really enjoy it. I really like the photo. I yeah, don't think I'm anyone else cared friend. about it. I, I will fight your friend. It looks it looks like a trash heap, honestly, but it's like a really good looking <laughs> trash heap. If you could call it that. No, it's very it's very it's very visual. Uh, I was like, this is this can be in Korea. So I was wondering if it's in America <laughs> somewhere, but it, it's nailed it, nailed the composition. Uh, this is one of your more recent posts. Let me just zoom in a little bit. And, uh, one of your more recent posts. I'm assuming this is get to the point in live and in action. Yes, that is correct. Live and in action. Not much to really say. I think it might be our first show at that club. Oh, which club is and this? Because we're we're wearing. I'm wearing a sweater, so I'm guessing that was like one of our first shows in the winter, and my hair's dastardly long for you know, fresh cut right now in comparison smooth <laughs> and and that character on the left billy um he he joined our band like a very typical korean student and then like over a period of a month he went through three or four hundred different musical identities uh he's he's yeah it's definitely old photo <laughs> that the show's ff club ff is in hongdae it's one of those shows that or venues that um pay a little bit uh you get mm. bottle service for playing there so we enjoy it as a band good we get treated well 
Yeah. But the audience is usually hit or miss. You get the random drunkards from the street that are just partying late, or you might get uh, full-on Koreans that are like, oh, I've never heard this music before, and get uh, interested. Uh, it's usually a good mix. But we always play last or late, and there's like a happy hour, so we get drunk people, for sure. It gets rowdy. Oh. Yeah, it's kind of divey. Uh, but, the, I mean, it, uh usually i want to say if the, if it's a good drunk then the drunk crowd could be <laughs> could be epic yeah, it gets... but there needs to be a it needs to be a good drunk crowd right um, oh my god baby got back <laughs> baby got back like, yeah what yeah <laughs> what so in florida they call me shakira uh <laughs> i have no I idea no why <laughs> Yeah, um, they're like, I can see uh, which part of Detroit you're from or how, how you're from Detroit. <laughs> they said I got some black in my booty. Or I'm just like, yeah, I, I do have a genetically nice butt. Not going to lie. But this and photo is from a comedy show uh, promo that oh. I do stand-up comedy as well. So as I've mentioned, I dabble in a lot. I, I jump around. Um, I actually just did an open mic the other day. I went to a show last night, didn't perform, just watched. So this was more yeah, of a yeah. promo shot. I'm just trying to be goofy and fun. It was a professional yeah. studio and I saved this one. Uh, I think cause you know, obviously I got some curve in there. <laughs> you put that Love Fibonacci it. circle right over there. It'll go right on. It would it's right, right there. There you go. I'm gonna just. I'll I'll ask an editor to just put put, put that over there just for reference or something. I laughed so hard when I saw this picture. I was like, oh, everything is really aesthetic or it's music related or something like that. And then the, it's this random photo, and I'm like, <laughs> I have so many questions. <laughs> um, this one is also fairly recent, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, after a show? After a show. It was one of those, hey, get on the stage, just get a group photo. Uh, some of us are opposed to group photo. I don't know why. It's silly sometimes. In Korea, they always get a group photo after a show, and it is kind of not what we do in America or yeah. anywhere I've seen. It's like, it's kind of silly. It's not a novelty. It's, you know, it's a performance. It's kind of a job. It's, um, you're happy to be done. We want to interact with the audience, not ourselves. It seems kind of narcissistic, yeah. but I'm glad we took it because this is the old, one of the few photos we took of ourselves where we're all happy and together. Um, <laughs> and it's a like, good show. It, it packs a lot of memories in the one little photo just for being a show, even though all shows kind of seem the same, they all have their own kind of niche about that night. And this one we had to travel like, for. We traveled a little bit for the show. Uh, I was going to ask, is it the same club as before, the FF club? But I see there's mm. a different logo in the background. It's yeah, a really it's cool alleyway. photo. <laughs> alleyway. Is that what it says alleyway. in the background? Yeah. I was trying to like figure out what it says. I could not do it. This one is also <laughs> a favorite. I was like, ah, oh, he's American. There we go. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so you made Donald Trump, the real Donald Trump. <laughs> that's actually Donald Trump. Yeah, met him. That's a Halloween photo. I hope that's yeah. obvious. <laughs> but that's during, uh, yeah, also during COVID. Disclaimer, mask is on, his is not. Uh, I don't know why. Oh, he was, he was on that costume all week. He loved it so much. He did that all week. So I kept seeing him. Everyone's got no. photos with him. Yeah, he's just like a he's a local dude. Everyone knows him at the bars because he lives in the foreigner area. I think because he's a he's in the military. Yeah, and he's a little higher rank, so he he never got kicked off base. He's been here a while, and I see him around a lot. So I was like, I gotta get a photo with you. Obviously, this is pretty funny. <laughs> like he just did that for a full week. That's amazing. Yeah, a whole week he did that. I don't even I don't even think that's, he was that's... sober. <laughs> I was like, either that's like real commitment to the craft, to the to the fake persona, or that some substance <laughs> abuse might be um, in play there for sure. Because I mean, that's yeah, a, that's a lot of orange face paint to wear for a week. That's a lot of. Um, I'm surprised the Oompa Loompas haven't canceled them yet. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty close, right? <laughs> it's pretty um, close. You are gonna educate me today a bit on death call because the stuff right. I know. I uh I wouldn't call myself the biggest um mental know all 
enthusiast, in the, although I do enjoy it quite often. Uh, but when it comes to deathcore, I know nothing. <laughs> absolutely nothing i know the genre i've heard some of its music but i've never actually gone into it so whatever you say today is um is gospel uh, and i will believe everything all the lies or non-lies that you tell me um but the thing that i know about deathcore and this is and i'm, yes. I'm gonna just a lot of people are gonna hate me for this but this is the stereotype of the genre let's just say metal and primarily deathcore in general is that it's associated with everything that's bad in the world. Um, most metal artists or the music itself is con connotated with like Satanism and death and you're mm. all linked to the Illuminati. And if there is a serial killer, he or she was brought up in their childhood with metal or death or something alike. And if you're not Satan itself, then you're probably the reason why there are such mass shootings in the world and everything that you know, everything that's bad, everything that's negative in the world gets drawn back to either video games or metal music. Um, and then your little niche of that genre specifically. So I want to know for someone that's, I want to say in that world, in that genre, why do you think that this is, oh, not why do you think it's from that, but do you think that this criticism is warranted at all to the genre? Um, yes. <laughs> as, as a stereotype, I think it's kind of like one of those, if you don't know a lot about it, the first thing you think about it, it'll come to mind. Even for me, I still think of like if someone says death metal, first thing that comes to mind is like Mayhem, which has a lot of stories about that band. They had a movie come out about them, like there's some murder involved, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, when people say like black metal, I think about you know burning churches and satanism as well and uh if i if i hear mm. like rap metal i think like like limp biscuit or uh zebra head or something like there things pop in your head when you see the, hear these words associated terms and acts but um i think just the general angst and an outlet for emotions very powerful in music as anyone can attest to being listeners of their favorite genre or music mm. And they've divulged into they diverged into different uh, micro genres or niches, and they become what they are today. And they may carry over some of those um, like associations. Uh, I think our bands like more constitute as hardcore, but with some deathcore influences in the vocals and like mm -hmm. breakdowns. And we love that because it's heavy, it's brutal, it's 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 a confection of the human soul that that people digest universally yeah. even the yeah. the Koreans that are or the locals that just don't know what they they might be afraid of at first but like at the end they're like that was catharsis and I love hearing that yeah. because it is for me too still and the the hardcore part of our band we we stem from towards more positivity a lot of hardcore is surprisingly they they shout about and get angry about being positive they're not actually angry yeah. they're it's a passionate <laughs> outrage of, just, of wanting the world really to be angry. a better place they just sound angry yeah. exactly like let's make mm -hmm. the world a better place uh even like people probably heard of hate breed right this this the yeah, yeah. band name itself hate breed uh, a breed of hate you come from hate but their songs are all positive and it's amazing they're like straight edge they they don't like um associate or want mm. to like like validate the life of uh non sobriety yeah. because they think music will save people's people's uh mental health or their emotional health or just people use it to work out they use it to get their angst out or meet new friends music's a great outlet but we do carry some like my family especially when they they're like this is your music <laughs> for sure they're feel? just like are you a Satanist? Are you gonna rip my flesh off and eat it? It's been I've gotten that. Of, of course. You're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why no, not? Now that you mention it. And I have a, a yeah. friends band, if I may mention them, uh Summoner Circle in Tennessee, who I was briefly in a couple projects that were other than that with some of the members. They they uh have like a literal like sacrificial uh theatrical kind of performance a nice spec <coughs> excuse me nice spectacle of a false sacrifice where they cut a girl's throat yeah. and blood's everywhere uh, and they're wearing makeup and hoods it's gruesome yeah and they're about to tour europe so 
Hey. <laughs> oh, but Europe loves hardcore. Like Europe is like the wow. mecca for it, I think. But it's interesting uh, now that you mention it with the <laughs> the family members as well. Um, I recently watched. Uh, so I stay home a lot, so I watch a lot of Netflix. I think I am the Same. main. They the, the main the revenue stream is just from my 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 account. I'm pretty sure of it. Um, but I watched the Woodstock '99. Um, oh, the documentary. documentary. Oh, yeah. yeah, and it was so funny that the they talked to obviously most of the bands or some of the bands, and then the 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 organizers or the producers and the concert goes that they're also interviewed now it's like yeah when it got to like corn and limp biscuit like the people became so such like more paganistic and it felt like a riot and everything and then they would bring on jewel and jewel would just calm everyone down or willie nelson or whatever and i <laughs> just like i don't know i was like it's not it's not because of the band it's just because of the music the music is so different it has a different it makes you feel different. So obviously yeah. it's going to have a different reaction. It's energy. To the and then, but the best part is then they would cut to the, uh, the, uh, the front man of, uh, corn. And he'd just be like chilling in this really all beige lounge in his house. He's like, yeah, he doesn't know what happened, but he's okay with it. And he's like the most chill dude ever. And you would expect like a corn's front man to be like, Oh, death to everyone or whatever. And he's just like, Hey, yeah. It's okay. Cool. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> <laughs> and I think um, a lot of the the metal musicians, obviously you do have your really ho- like hardcore, I'm going to say evil uh, <laughs> metal musicians, but most metal musicians are really just the sweetest people alive. You've seen it's, my photos. It's a fact. I mean, let me just pop that. Oh. <laughs> that <really big> <laughs> no, it's it's a it's such a big misconception, and it's like saying, I don't even know. How to, it's like saying Enya is just chill all the time. She's not a chill person in real life. She's like such a diva. <laughs> but it's uh, the 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 music is so connotated with the musician that it has this whole aura about it. And if they just take away the really the the really evil sound of it then they would see like the lyrics would if if people if you just go read the lyrics or some of the metal music you'd be like oh this is actually really positive as you mentioned it's um i think people don't give it a chance enough mm. chance uh which is sad eh? Mm. i don't know um i want to read you a quote sure from justin longshore and uh he says justin longshore says death core is new new metal it sucks and if anyone calls us deathcore then i might do something very bad to them you know i really hate the term i know we've been labeled as that but i think there's so much more to our music than just a mixture of death metal and hardcore even though we incorporate those elements in our music um and then he goes on to this extremely long tangent about everything about deathcore and new metal and hardcore metal etc etc and um i went on to the main deathcore um uh, subreddit uh and it's like all it's like the <laughs> as if it's high school and you have your the hardcore clicks. table <laughs> in the cafe clicks yeah and then the hardcore and the new metal and the math metal clicks are all just the, the, collectively hating on the death core click um so i want to know in your opinion like why do you think death core has been proverbially shunned by its other brothers and sisters in the cafeteria. <laughs> I have an easy answer for this, just just because I was on both sides of that fence at one point. Um, I was kind of like an elitist metalhead growing up, you know? <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of, like, a lot of musicians, if you're a musician, you're going to be more critical about other musicians, about their musicality, about their principles, about how they do things. And I think Deathcore is probably, arguably... One of the easiest genres of metal because people assume it's just like high distortion, random <laughs> chords, and screaming into a microphone, just da 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 blast beats. But there, yeah. I think there's a lot more that goes into it for the more successful or well rounded bands, obviously. But they people like to pick on the stuff that's easy to pick on, which 
there are a lot mm -hmm. of bands that come out of the woodwork doing that and then fail or dissipate or just get they, they do it for a quick like fun thing and it just becomes uh, out of their system and they're done but um like I, the first band picture you saw me it was it was more like progressive metal where i had to do different time signatures and follow the drums and i couldn't move around because yeah. i'm like counting math equations in my head as i play <laughs> And it was not fun. Yeah. It sounded awesome, and people like were like, "Yeah, good job," but mm. it wasn't fun. Yeah, <laughs> deathcore is fun. I don't yeah. know. So it was hardcore. All, all these metal genres are. I've never got into the arguing about them. I mean, I used to, but I don't argue at the I core mean... about why something's better or worse than the others. I just have good favorite bands. If they happen to yeah. fall in that category, then whatever. <laughs> I think I think it's much more like. Um... Obviously, musicians have a certain respect for each other. That doesn't matter which genre you're in. Like, I'm pretty sure, uh, mm. I don't know, Dave Grohl would have respect for, I don't know, Beyonce or whatever. I, could, I couldn't even think of two artists now. But I think uh, we had a guest on recently um, that talked about if you were creating music, um, especially as a songwriter or someone that's in a band, and you're not just a cover band, you write your own music, that it's like having, it's like you are a, cup of water and you keep pouring out pouring out and if you don't refill your own cup like you're gonna run dry um and it's not just for writing music it's for performances in general as well because you get such a i want to say a performance high and then when you get off stage you have your performance step um so i want to know how do you refill your cup it's a silly way to put it but in what way do you re replenish creatively? I've actually used this very specific analogy for the same thing uh, before, trying to explain why I keep doing what I do or or pursue something, yeah. right? Because I'm always jumping around. Um, for music, for me, it's a definitely performance. Like sometimes, a, like, oh, there, we have a show today. We have a show today. <sighs> like we just <laughs> exhaust because we know the energy is about to leave us. We know we're going to be exhausted after. It's just, but then 10 minutes before we go on the stage, we're, we're suddenly hype again. We're like, yeah, let's, let's do this. Let's do the show. Oh my God, the look at the, oh, popping, we got yeah. some audience. Oh, they're excited. The, oh, look at these guys. They're, they look like they are not going to have a good time. Let's make sure they have a good time. So we, we're like, we really yeah. make it an opportunity every time to just just give it all. Even if there's like five people, we, we give it our all. It doesn't matter. And we always have yeah. fun. And um, we always, we, every show, we always get, somebody or multiple somebody's just just saying how we've succeeded in uh fighting their expectations or changing how they saw us That's when they awesome. first saw us like some of us do like little wardrobe changes uh to keep it interesting um like one of our shows we all wore like short shorts and tank tops um <laughs> we got them at like h&m which i believe is a european store and they, yeah, yep. <laughs> I'm sitting over here on my couch, still folded from laundry for three weeks because I'm not going to really wear them again. But we, yeah. we do little things like that. Uh, we talk about dressing up like other bands and pretending we're them and just kind of, we're, we're fun. <laughs> we make it fun and it always fills our cup. Um, also, yeah, just, just people recognizing us on the street, which doesn't happen much right now but we anticipate maybe in the future like they're like hey i saw you guys last week uh, i loved it yeah uh, we had especially from germany this guy he might be gone now he went to every single one of our shows just just this random guy we met in the street he just came he loved us so much he came to every we got him for free as much as we could because we were like if you want to come we'll, we'll help you out and um uh, so another girl came from like two hours away just to see us and she liked us and kept wow. coming to our shows and I'm like, if you keep doing that, like we're it's gonna refill our cup immediately, right? That's our top off right there. Yeah, that just gives you yeah, that Super gives you boost. such a boost, I yes. can imagine. Uh, but, Matt, but that's really cool. It is yes. time to behold the meteor shower. This section uh -huh. is to keep you on your toes. It's a couple of rapid fire questions. So I'm gonna throw a, a tiny handful of questions your way. And the first answer yeah. that pops into your head is the right one. We're gonna go with that. So I want to ask you, are you ready to behold the meteor shower? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, if you could be an instrument, which one would you be? Saxophone. You're the second person that says that. And that's such a <laughs> random answer. Like, of all the instruments, saxophone. Okay, good. That's good. 
I can't follow up question. I can't do a follow up. I need it. I kind of like pull through. Uh, SpongeBob or Patrick? Both. Uh, Patrick. Patrick, agree or disagree? Aliens built the pyramids. Disagree. <laughs> Which movie has the best soundtrack? Uh, Inception. <laughs> Ooh, good one. Uh, which friend's character are you? Joey. Joey, good one. Uh, which is better, small club audiences or massive stadium aud- audiences? Both. Dive bars. Dive bars, a good one. Uh, <laughs> Whitechapel or Slaughter to Prevail? Oh my God. Uh, it's a bias one. I'm from, I live in Tennessee right next to Whitechapel. I own one of their guitars. <laughs> I have one of their guitars, <laughs> but Alex Terrible from Slaughter Prevail. Ah, that's not fair. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I gotta choose two really good bands. Got you. I got you on that one. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'll give it a pass. Uh, who would win in an epic battle? Okay, this one is a. I need to focus on this one. Who would win in an epic battle? Harry Potter with a gun or John Wick with a pencil? John Wick. John Wick with a pencil. It's always John Wick with a pencil. Even that pencil, man. Um, and this one is the one that gets everyone. Unfortunately, mm. only one answer is allowed. No okay. if, buts, maybes on this one. Right. The best song of all time. Uh, Come Sail Away, Enya. <sighs> Come Sail Away, Enya. <laughs> Come Sail Away, Enya. I'm going to be real honest with you. Did not expect that answer. Not at all. Me neither. <laughs> I planted the seed earlier. Like you I think did. You're the first, <sighs> I think I think you're probably the first guest that we've had that has said Enya. Enya comes <laughs> sail away. Yeah. I, I'm gonna just put it. I spent in my head the whole time you mentioned it. Come sail away. <laughs> it's gonna be stuck in my head. I'm gonna ask the editors just to put it on in the background for the remainder of this podcast. So it can you know what? Play the, more specifically, it's the South Park version that's in my head. Oh, the so- I haven't heard the South Park version in such a long time. I forgot they did that. That's they amazing. did. Yeah, they gonna, made it I'm a horrible this- earworm. <laughs> I want to talk a bit about Get to the Point. Um, sure. It's a rel- it's a relatively new band that you started um, in South Korea, as you said. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Uh, I want to first just go to the name. The name is so random. It is. I thought it f- I thought at first that. Um, <laughs> you were being snarky <laughs> when I went to the oh like, uh, yeah. satirical when I went to the band's page I get to the point I was like that can't be the band name that's the band name um, how did you guys come up with it and what is the story behind it uh, well Craig our guitarist slash founder he started the band he's like I'm going to pick the name we're like alright no arguments there and he, he just come up to practice one day and he's like get to the point we're like what so that's the band name Okay. Just went with it. No one <laughs> argued. Just, all right, sure. And like you said, you thought we were maybe being snarky, but we get that a lot. Like, um, I, we don't mean to. It's just our band name. And we're just like, uh, yeah, we're, uh, get to the point. They're like, what? We just, what's your band name? Let's get to the point. Get That's the, the band point. name. <laughs> and we feel stupid. Like, oh, did, was it a good idea to name it this? But it's it was kind of like, you know, random and kind of like a joke. He's like, it's the band name. Just remember. He, he never intended it to be the band name, but it's stuck, I guess, and we like it. We don't care. It abbreviates well, GTTP. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's, it's also, it's, I don't want to say easy to remember. It makes it sound, I don't know, the name is stupid or something, but it's such a, it's a memorable name that, you know, yeah. oh, it's that band. <laughs> that band with the name. <laughs> so, I mean, it works. It totally works. Um and how did you guys all get together, except for you walking down random streets um, <laughs> and finding uh, totally safe musicians to play with? How totally. did you, in the end, uh, become the band that you are today? Um, well, my first project, I was wandering the streets, and Craig and this band, I met through him in one of those wanderings. Uh, he wasn't on the street, <laughs> per se, but we jammed, and I and I basically stole some other members for the band I was creating, and uh, at the time, Craig was very um, purist. He didn't care about pedals, or he just wanted just he just wanted to play hard and go hard. But then he kind of went into this stint 
where he didn't do music and then suddenly pops back in. He's like, hey, you still in that band that you made? I'm like, yeah, but I think it's falling yeah. apart because, you know, a lot of us are expats and uh, they just go back home eventually or have some yeah. other things to pursue. And so I was like, yeah, let, let's do it. Let's do a little side project. I didn't expect it to go anywhere. I expected maybe one or two shows and just call it quits because that's basically what he wanted to do was just have one last hurrah in Korea before he left. But here he is, another year in Korea doing music just like me. I did the same thing. Oh, I like the music. Let's keep and going. Now you're stuck. Yeah. Stuck there, Matt. Now you're stuck there. Stuck. Um, um, okay, but Matt, I want to thank you for co piloting this rocket ship today. And before we check our engines, I want to give you a chance to shout out any platforms or project before you go. But remember to follow us in the Stella Sound Discord community or head on over to Instagram for the latest Stella updates. Matt, any projects or platforms you'd like to shout oh, out? I'll just do the basic ones, just me and my band, it's <laughs> obvious. Um, we post other bands like the shirt I'm wearing now that we really like and are also inspired by or co-pilot together in the music industry. Um, my yeah. YouTube isn't that great. It'll come back up soon, but I have a lot of short films on there. I'm kind of proud of them. They're my little baby projects. Uh, that's sh- very good. I can attribute to that. I, I, I can <laughs> confirm. Ten out of ten. Yeah, and, uh, my <laughs> photography page, but that's. You know, I think people would be interested in that. I'm not really doing anything crazy, but if they're in Korea, I'm happy to shoot you. And uh, yeah, <laughs> rock, rock yeah, right front in front door. Right in front of your front door. Whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't really have any other oh, platforms. Okay, but great. Definitely the band. Check us out. Instagram. Instagram um, they will all be listed in the description as far as I know. Uh, yeah, the Instagram page for the band and also mm. for you, Matt. But listeners and fellow astronauts out there from Milian Repulsion and my guest Matt, we want to thank you for joining us here at the Still Sign Podcast. <laughs>